technical solution, which are um, uh, mostly a software solution based on existing hardware. And for that, we worked a lot with, with HP, I will come back on that. Just some sample of the simulator, three sample. One is for carpentry. Carpentry is a, is, is a big deal today. We need to train woodworkers. That's a huge demand for construction everywhere in the world. Uh, it can be to build furniture, to be a house. And this is a, a matter of security most of the time because well, you know carpenter, you met carpenter often, and they often have a, a finger missing. That's really, really, when it's only one, that's good. Um, so that's really unfortunate. And we're trying to find a way to avoid that by training them through um, a table that display the 3D vision of uh, the blades and with the feeling of uh, the plank uh, that move along the, the, the blades, you have force feedback, meaning that you can feel the strength of the blade on the, the plank. Um, and, and that's a real uh, impressive environment that helps the newcomers to manipulate the wood in a safe way. So they can practice here and they can then be safe on the real machine. It can work for young people that usually are not allowed to touch this kind of equipment. And it works, of course, for adults that want to be retrained. Painting, same thing. Painting is immersive this time. This time you put an headset on and you will see the whole world around you replaced by a painting cabin. This is one of our best sellers today. We're selling a lot of this device in Russia and in other places, mainly to vocational training, technical school, and university. Uh, there you can really practice any kind of spray painting and practice your body motion, hand motion, and concentration. And, and the results is analyzed in terms of quantity of painting, position of your hand, your body, your body motion, and all that things. That is really efficient. In so, um, in, in, it's so efficient that uh, by practicing on this simulator, at the end, you are nearly sure that the quality of your painting in the real world will be good. It, it, it improves the speed of learning and it, uh, it reduces um, the, the drop off in, in this, uh, this education process. Welding is the same. Welding is the, the bigger market today. We have something like 100,000 uh, welder missing all around the world. And um, there's been welding simulators since 20 years. So it's the first one we developed. And, um, and it's a big, 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 uh, a big problem. Problem is the motion, mainly the hand motion. You have to be very precise and steady for a long time. And for that, VR is very interesting because you can put the headset, but you can also use, and that's also VR, you can also use a, a screen on which you will weld uh, and you will be tracked, uh, your hand will be tracked through very pre precise sensors. That is um, very efficient. And the demonstration of the efficiency has been made through several studies since uh, 20 years. Um, we shortened the time at least by two. We improved the quality of learning, the speed of learning, um, and, and it results in a, in, in a very high quality welders at the end, which is very interesting for emerging countries. So that product is one of the best seller um, in, um, in Asia, Africa, uh, America, and so on. More recently, we moved to um, all-in-one solution. I'm calling that all-in-one solution because it's running on one device and you can have several trades on the same device. So basically what we have in our uh, offer, it's, it's a case because it's more convenient, but you can imagine buying a standalone net set. You can imagine having your own equipment. It works on any kind of uh, um, immersive solution. So usually it should be a quite high hand solution because if you just use your cell phone in a cardboard, the quality will be, will be not enough and the hand motion will not be tracked. So it has to be uh, at least, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want to, uh, to bother you with brands, but it can be the Oculus from Facebook, it can be the HTC, it can be, and it can be the HP uh, Reverb, uh, which is um, a very good pro product for us. And, and for that, we partner with HP in distributing this solution uh, around the world. 
on that case, you have several layers. So it, it works like that. The virtual workshop, I call that a virtual workshop, is the hardware. The case I show you, or you run it set if you have one. Then, then you have members discover. So discover is very small uh, case experience in VR to create the awareness and help in the job placement. And then to go deeper in trades, you have training vertical uh, modules. So it's a really a, a key, uh, a turnkey solution that can work for job placement and for a training center, technical training center. Uh, I would just give you some insight of uh, the content of that, but uh, very briefly. Um, so the aim is to have uh, something um, that cover most of the trades to, you know, to create the awareness and help in, in, in detecting the talents. Uh, by working on that on that modules, you work on on specific skills at any time at, at each time. For instance, for instance, construction safety is about safety on site. So when the student or the the guy or woman will work on site, he will have to move around, avoiding danger and detecting the the area that are risky. That is a way to evaluate your capability of detecting risk and staying safe. So that one skill. Uh, for scaffolding, uh, you have another skill to, uh, to, to make work. It is the, the vertical. You have to be able to work at eight. So we, we make you work, uh, climb on the scaffolding. But when you are very high, you can feel the vertical in VR. That's very interesting because if you are sensitive to that and if you have if you have fear that uh, then you should probably not work in this kind of trades and and we go on like that in the street trades we have hvac electrical maintenance electrical is understanding the process of the electricity being able to cut the power before changing an outlet it's very basic but we can analyze this and it gives you an idea of your, um, your, your talent. At the same time, it also may create um, passion uh, for, for the student, for the people that will try. Like uh, poultry cutting is very specific things, but I met a lot of kids that say, oh, I, want to, I want to do that, I want to cut the chicken. So that, that, you know, that, that's part of the, of the work of the, of, the, of, the, of the tool. And then other things like, being in a garage, changing the tires, uh, installing a sink uh, in, a, in, a, in a bathroom and, and becoming a plumber, cleaning a, a floor, and finally taking care of older people. And that's all. another skill, which is more human skill, but that's interesting and we can evaluate this kind of things. The key of that is a platform called Vulcan because you can have as much VR world and I really want to emphasize on that. If you don't have a tracking system to analyze what's happening in the VR world, it is not an immersive learning solution. It is just a VR tool, a VR game. It creates the awareness, but it will not help the teacher to, to train the students. You have to have this kind of uh, tracker uh, embedded into the VR. This tracker needs to send information, so here is to uh, Volcan, so the teacher will have the skills progression of each individual. And at the same time, the trainer is able to adapt the exercise, change the settings, change the parameter, change the tolerances, create new curriculum, and assign this curriculum to each student. So if you can do that, you see that it becoming a VR assistant for the teacher, and it also creates individual pathway. So it really creates the, the, the power of VR combined with artificial intelligence is really here for the education. Uh, that, that's really something that we really demonstrate since a while. That's also a matter of human being. It empower the teacher. And then the teacher has to be trained also because it's not the same teacher as before. It's really a revolution for her or him. So we really need to uh, emphasize on the training of the trainer and how they can become digital in the future. Uh, 
Well, I think, do I have two minutes to show you a video or my time is over? I think we have to, to, to see your video. Okay. It's very interesting. Thank you. So to, because I know it's it's maybe a little bit late for you, and maybe uh, I know that the, the concentrate usual human concentration is not more than ten minutes. I'll send you. Uh, I want you to look at that video that explain all and, and summarize all the things I tried to say today. Well, I guess you don't have the sound, right? Unfortunately, we don't. Unfortunately, okay, just, yeah. just give me a second. I'm coming back. It's just I have to pick the the case uh, share sounds and, and it will work. I'm coming back and it, it should run now. Unemployment is rising, while around the world skilled jobs remain unfilled. Get the right people trained with the right skills. Using Vulcan by Mimbus. Vulcan is a unique simulation system that teaches, monitors, personalizes, and follows up on trainees' learning in real time through an immersive virtual reality experience. With the award-winning HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition headset, students can practice new jobs in VR, and instructors are armed with hard data. The HP Omnicept software tracks factors including gaze, response time, and cognitive load, recording and analyzing users' behaviors and sensations as they train. Vulcan then takes that data and analyzes it for training purposes. Whatever trade or labor skills you need, Vulcan can help attract more candidates, help with placement across high-demand industries, and reduce training time and costs. Concentration, precision, efficiency, Identify workers' strengths and enhance their skills, whether you're training workers in emerging countries or finding placements for disabled people. Mimbus and HP put the power of people in your hands. Contact us to learn more. Well, I think you hear the sound this time. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. So, so I wanted just to conclude my presentation by saying this thing is not uh, the future. This thing is today. We have it running in Russia in several places already. Um, and we have close relationship with Russian partners. So um, we, we, we really want to um, make the people understand the benefits of that and support the, the spread of this uh, solution around the world and emphasis on the fact that the trainer is the key of that. It's so VR will work if the trainer uh, accepts to integrate VR into their teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laurent. It was very interesting to listen to you again. And yeah, I can prove that there is interest in your product in Russia, but at the same time, there is a language barrier. And still, since it's still not translated into Russian, our teachers are hesitating. Um, but anyway, I have two questions for you. One is silly and another one is not that silly. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Since it's a scientific conference, I'll try to start with not that silly one. Um, so my question is about children. Let's say the age of K-12 or in Russia, we don't have that system, but let's say um, teenagers, right? So do you implement your product in... Um, for, for students of that age? And what is the feedback of teachers? How do you work in this field? Very good question. And it's not silly at all. We, um, oh, this, we this one is not silly. The silly oh, is silly. was the good one. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the other one. Sorry. No, that's really, that's essential for us. Uh, as I said, it's an awareness tool and it's a, it's a way to detect talent and patient. And we started to implement that. So we started not before 12 because there's a problem of, uh, there's an issue of uh, biology, you know, um, putting an headset uh, and screen close to the eyes of very young children is not recommended for the moment. So, but from 12 and especially uh, 13, 14, when they started to um, see what kind of job they want to, they, they want to, they have patient usually at that time and they, 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 we need to understand how to, this patient can fit in their future um, uh, job. 
So we deployed that at mid school, mid school and high school uh, in France, and we started to do that also here in the US. Uh, it's really the idea of discovering the patient and driving the student to a job before the drop, the drop, they drop down. Uh, because there's a lot of kids that you know, I think I think you know that also in Russia, my, my brother is like that. He has he has to work in the academic path and he was not designed for that. So uh, if he was treated like uh, you know dumb and 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 at the end he left the school to go to a technical school where he become passionate, he become an expert, and he come back to uh, traditional paths and, and, and succeed in his study. So we want to avoid this kind of bump in the education through VR. So that's really a good question. Uh, I think it's designed for kids. Thank you so much. And another one, why actually cutting a chicken in virtual reality if you can take a chicken and cut it in the classroom? In classroom? What's, <laughs> so that's the, what's the point? <laughs> chicken is not expensive. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Chicken. So it's really um, so it's cutting food in general, and it's um, chicken is the first layer of the, this education pathway. So we call that uh, uh, food. It's members food in general in our area. We 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 work with pork, with beef, and all that things. Uh, but but chicken is the first uh, step, and and it's a matter of it, it, well, you, when you get in chicken at home. It's very simple. You can most of the people can do it, but you're not very. I mean, you're just cutting the chicken to eat. It's it's different from the industry. In the industry, you can imagine you have a production line. You are on a work um, space, and you have the chicken coming on a pole, and you have to do each motion very fast, very precisely, and with a certain timing. And you have also a knife that become less and less sharper that you have. To and that you have to sharpen regularly. So this kind of process, doing it like a, I would say like a robot, but be, you know, being able to do that as fast as possible without using a real chicken, so without slowing down the production line, is the key of this training. Thank you. Now it's clear. And actually, you have another question in our chat. If you want, you can read it yourself and answer. Uh, did you measure it? Oh, what, what was it? Oh no, the first I can read it for you so that anyone, okay. uh, everyone can can hear. Sorry. Thank you for such a, uh, an explicit report. Do you plan to integrate your environments with haptic systems? This is the first question. So yes, well, so we have some haptic system with woodworking, for instance. Uh, it's um, haptic system is another is another feedback for us. So um, we try to avoid that in our development, just because we want the system to run for everybody. So sometimes haptic system is expensive, is fragile, and for schools, high schools, and so on, it may be difficult to have them. Um, but we have partners. Um, you know, Vulkan is an open platform. So Vulkan is tracking the learning in, in, of immersive learning, but we have, you can create your own immersive learning and connect to our Vulkan, it's, it's free. Uh, so we have some partner that doing that with the uh, haptic system. Um, well, again, it's, it's something that's coming up and I guess in the future it will be cheaper and cheaper, but so far we just have the vibration of the joystick. Thank you. And the last question for you for today is, did you measure, oh, this is a question for a researcher. <laughs> did you measure virtual environments in immersion extent? Um, yeah, well, the, the feedback, um, if I'm right, the question is about the, 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 the impact of uh, virtual uh, uh, learning, right? Well, I guess so. It's not my question. It's someone from YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, 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 we have, we have, we, we, we have, we are, we are working with scientists, uh, psychologists, uh, pedagogists, and all that things. It really depends on the traits. It really depends on the way the immersive uh, learning uh, system has been designed. Uh, what is sure that uh, if it's too simple in a way, if it just replicates reality and if there's no pedagogical tracking uh, in the VR, that thing is often just a game 
can attract people, but it does not speed up the learning. To make it efficient, it, it has really to become a learning system. In a way, the VR content has to be designed so it will speed up the understanding, meaning you have to look at the trade and decide what will be addressed by VR. It's not necessarily a full, real representation of reality in VR. It, it can be for welding, for instance, it's a motion. You don't care about uh, the power supply or the fusion, of, the fusion of the metal. It's really the motion. And that is efficient for VR. So if that's really the way it's designed, and then the way uh, you track that and you integrate that in an existing curriculum, uh, and finally, the integration of the human, so the trainer. So if the trainer is not trained, you will lose money and you will probably lose time at the end. If the trainer is really trained and, and capable of integrating that digital solution, the, that, that can divide by 10 the, the learning time and that can remove any drop, uh, drop off uh, of students uh, in, in this training. Thank you so much, Laurent. Uh, now it's time for next speakers and you can enjoy your business trip in Chicago. Wish you luck, stay with us. <laughs> Maybe you will have questions for other speakers. All right, now it's um, time for Argalova Yulia, Kovalev Artyom. They will uh, talk about virtual reality and traditional educational format, which is very um, <laughs> disputable topic nowadays. So please comment. I will introduce our, our, our talk. Uh, uh, it was the first uh, attempt for us to understand how can we compare the uh, virtual reality educational tools with uh, traditional educational tools. So and now Julian will present the result of our uh, small, but I think uh, very important for us experiment. Uh, okay, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. My name is Julia Rogoleva, and today me and uh, uh, and uh, my colleague uh, to talk about virtual reality as an education tool. Uh, so demonstration. One minute. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, so, new technologies are penetrating into education, and the modern uh, education is whole world uh, is characterized by uh, introduction of uh, digital um, technologies, and there is a continuous research growing in the education system to its technology. And the problem of modern education development in digital economy is of high interest for the government. And uh, one of the um, of the uh, modern uh, technology widely used in modern education is virtual reality. And despite the presence of uh, uh, some studies uh, devoted to assess the effectiveness of virtual reality application in education process, uh, there are no clear conclusions for this problem. And uh, as we know, the foreign scientists uh, uh, have already uh, researched uh, some aspects uh, of uh, this uh, problem. Uh, but there are some aspects uh, that have to be uh, further researched. And so uh, our task uh, is to uh, solve the problem and we will to, uh, do everything possible to uh, solve it. And uh, virtual reality is being uh, actively uh, researched in our country and the laboratory of our faculty research uh, uh, is uh, um, constantly uh, being carried out, uh, which they aimed uh, at studying the negative factors of virtual reality, the influence of virtual reality on cognitive process, uh, the study of the effect of presence, the study of the illusion of uh, movement uh, of uh, one's uh, own body and uh, much more. Uh, so uh, there are um, 
there are government programs aimed at the effective development of education in the digital area. For example, one of the priority projects in Russia is modern digital um, educational environment. And it's being implemented under the auspices of the um, Russian Education Development Program uh, for 2030-2020 years. And also strategy for the development for the information society in the Russian Federation uh, for 2070-2030 years and the program Digital um, economy for the uh, Russian Federation. Uh, another important project is Moscow Electronic School, uh, which is currently developed by Moscow. It is uh, a unique combination of uh, traditional education uh, forms uh, and using the uh, last uh, technologies, which uh, uh, allows to uh, teach and learn in a new way. So, uh, we use of uh, virtual reality to improve learning process has been an open question for a long time and virtual reality is predicted to, to create a paradigm shift in education and the purpose of our research is the evaluation of the effectiveness of virtual reality technologies to study a specific uh, subjects you need of uh, um, education material and uh, we have some uh, tasks uh, such as um, to choose uh, the uh, stimuli from users virtual reality store to create experimental program and to interpret uh, to result uh, so our hypothesis is uh, comprehension of the material presented in virtual reality is more uh, efficient in uh, comparison uh, to the traditional textbook and to virtual reality and, and to the video. Uh, so um, uh, methods, uh, our participants were 29 students uh, from Lomonosov Moscow State University, mean age uh, 20 years. Uh, and uh, participants were uh, randomly uh, sent uh, to receive uh, three versions of stimulation text to the video format and virtual reality. All uh, stimuli were in English. And um, you can see uh, our stimulation. Um, stimulation is very bright and colorful. Um, and um, equipment. The uh, stimulus material uh, was introduced by Samsung Gear VR uh, and Samsung Galaxy in virtual reality condition uh, by iPad in a 2D video condition and by textbook uh, in a text condition. So, uh, firstly, all participants were provided a um, questionnaire uh, survey uh, designed to measure uh, frequency of use of virtual reality, English level test, and uh, test to determine the basic level of knowledge material. Uh, so, the efficiency of learning was uh, test these questions before and after um, each uh, session. And um, here you can see our response, uh, our uh, participants um, on the first picture. Um, there is participants studying the material presented in a traditional format. Uh, in the second picture, there is a participant studying the material presented in virtual reality format. And uh, in the last picture, there is a participant studying uh, the material present in 2D video format. Uh, so our results um, within group com comparison uh, showed uh, that uh, after reading text and immersion uh, into virtual reality, the member of correct answer significantly change from the baseline uh, to the test and uh, uh, the learning session. Uh, after watching to the video, the member uh, of uh, correct uh, answers uh, increased uh, insignificantly and um, uh, intergroup uh, comparison uh, showed uh, that uh, after watching to the video, the member of um, correct answer uh, increased by only 2.9% and um, uh, 
significantly different uh, from uh, another formats uh, and uh, in significant different between virtual reality and text. Uh, so uh, uh, there are some uh, comprehension these other studies and um, the study of other colleagues at the um, another university show that uh, studying in the virtual reality uh, environment was found to be more uh, efficient than to reading text or uh, interacted uh, uh, this uh, to 3D model and the computer screen. And there are some negative effects uh, um, on students' outcomes after presenting learning material uh, in immersive virtual reality. And the reason of uh, this uh, leads uh, in the realism and uh, complexity of uh, virtual object and the presence of uh, additional object uh, the distant uh, uh, students' attention from the studied uh, prepared uh, and um, um, and uh, process uh, and reduce the learning uh, outcomes. Uh, so, uh, thank you for attention. Uh, and uh, it's thank all. you so much, Julia. It was a really interesting presentation, and I'm sure that Regina. Uh, has many questions to you because she is uh, the person who likes uh, discussing the topic of com comparing two education systems and two uh, approaches to this topic. And Regina, are you here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. I can hear you well. But the thing is that we don't really have much time because... Uh, uh, we don't really, we are not on, on time. So if you, uh, if you want to discuss this, you can do it a bit later or in our chat. And now, uh, Regina, um, Dr. Regina Kapman-Rakowski uh, <laughs> will, <laughs> okay. um, will talk about the current state of high immersion virtual reality in education beyond the wow factor. That's all what we know that VR is about wow effect, but not anymore as we probably will know right now. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Can you hear me well? And can yes. you see my screen? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, so um, I have a couple of uh, basically, uh, a couple of slides that I put together that touch uh, on the topic of uh, what is beneficial that, uh, well, some of these things will be obvious for you, but. I didn't know exactly about the audience, but uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the benefits of VR for education and about uh, the issues that we have with VR. And, and then I will uh, overview quickly a couple of my selected studies and talk a little bit about the future or possible future of VR in education. So uh, as far as the introduction, just wanted to make sure, because as we know, everybody uh, talks about VR and sometimes people uh, de define VR in different ways. Uh, my definition of VR is that it talks about VR that is experienced uh, using the VR headset, as opposed to desktop VR that sometimes people also uh, say it's VR, but I would call it a low immersion VR, just to, to make sure that we are on the same page. As far as benefits for education, I wanted to outline a couple of uh, things that uh, we can draw from the literature, existing literature. Uh, one of the things we know is that VR allows for immersion and sense of presence. We know that all. Uh, it allows for interaction. It also captivates and maintains the learner's engagement and encourages student-centered rather than teacher-centered uh, active learning. Some other benefits is that it enhances empathy and it boosts memorization. It also provides enjoyable, fun uh, learning opportunities and also reduces anxiety based on uh, some of the studies I've been uh, conducting. And as we all know, yes, there is all this wow factor. People start using VR and they go, wow, wow, wow. One of, the, uh, one of the studies that I'm conducting right now at the Museum of Science and History here uh, in the DFW, the Dallas area, uh, we have a lot of participants coming and those that use uh, VR headset for the first time, the first thing I hear is like, wow, 
wow, I could only uh, hear that word. Oh, sometimes cool, 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 everything is cool. But as we know, it's not always, I mean, for the first time it is, and that was, that was my first question to Yulia, uh, Yulia and Artem about their study that uh, did you control for the novelty effect? Because yes, for the first time, it's always cool. It does not always stay this way. And I'll talk about it in a moment. But to uh, bind that wow effect, uh, Rogers in Horbys, I believe, uh, coined virtual reality as the learning aid of the 21st century. I wish we had more discussion, uh, more time for discussion and see if we really think, think that. I kind of think that, I hope that, but uh, sometimes some of the research um, does not necessarily follow um, the same idea. So let me talk a little bit about uh, virtual uh, reality issues, some issues we might have with this type of technology. And uh, some of them, uh, some of the research uh, reports viewing discomfort, right? Uh, we have, uh, the, the headsets are not always compatible to, to the size of our, um, our face and the, the differences, the width of be, between our eyes. Sometimes it ca causes viewing discomfort, cyber sickness, Sometimes our head overheats if we use the, uh, the headset for too long. And as far as cost, it's not really for everyone. Of course, you can get something for $10, uh, uh, Google Cardboard, right? But if you want to have something more expensive like Oculus Quest, that's already several hundred dollars. And of course it can go on and on, including that HP um, headset that uh, Laurent shared with us. So it's not for everyone, not yet at least. As far as other issues, um, we have uh, limited teaching training and we found it from the, uh, this is based on the Russian context actually, uh, based on a survey of over 20,000 uh, Russian teachers. Uh, so the, teacher, the teachers are not necessarily all the way ready to implement virtual reality in the classroom. And we also know from the same survey that there is a limited uh, information technology support to, to support the, te the teachers that would want to use this technology. So that's uh, a couple of issues. And I took a couple of things from the existing literature as far as research goes about uh, the, let's say, negative outcomes that come from the studies, one of them is cognitive overload. Again, we have that wow, wow, wow effect and we get excited and we get excited about everything around because there is all the, everywhere we turn our head in the, in the VR headset, there's something exciting. And because of that, sometimes when we want to learn something like we have some learning content, whatever that is, a, a physics class, maths class, uh, maybe a language course, sometimes that excitement about the, the visual aspect of uh, VR, unfortunately takes too much of our cognitive capacity. And instead of focusing on what we want to learn, we focus on, uh, as we say, bells and whistles. So all, this, all these sound effects or visual effects. So sometimes it, it, it can be not that good for learning, right? Another issue is distraction. Uh, again, the same reason. Uh, we want to learn something, but there's something exciting on the other side. So instead of learning what we want to learn, we are excited about something, some distraction, let's say at the back of the 360 visualization. Uh, two more uh, notions about that. For example, one of my studies with a colleague, um, we learned that when students learned vocabulary in, in 360 environment, Unfortunately, the VR headset, uh, learning vocabulary with a VR headset was less eff effective than uh, learning exactly the same type of vocabulary uh, that was presented on a just regular screen, uh, again, 360 videos, so we could turn them around. So they were kind of immersive, but not the same type of immersiveness, uh, immersion that we have using a VR headset. And one more study that uh, was published by Parang and Mayer uh, this year it was, they showed that out of 11 studies, seven of them showed in basically that VR, uh, VR using headset is less effective than uh, virtual reality using the desktop, uh, desktop monitor. 
these are kind of preliminary um, preliminary effects, but uh, uh, results. But uh, I, I'm excited that this field is growing, and we can see what works and what doesn't. Because I believe that some things work with VR, sometimes don't, and our job is to find out what works best for whom and in what circumstances. So beyond that, uh, beyond that wow effect, I wanted also to just outline super briefly, very in a very on a very surface level, a couple of studies I've conducted using VR. The first one was uh, trying to uh, look at foreign language anxiety and students, uh, basically students practice public speaking in front of virtual agents, virtual classmates using a VR headset. And they were trying to um, speak, that was in a foreign language for them. They were German students, they were speaking in English and they were practicing uh, in different 16 different sessions uh, they were practicing speaking and the idea was to compare their virtual reality uh, uh, the virtual reality practice we compared it to students that uh, that practiced using just zoom and guess what happened um, we used different measures that i'm not going to go to details but uh, using different measures we so significant, uh, significant, statistically significant results showing that virtual reality is able to reduce the anxiety, the foreign language anxiety, compared to students using Zoom. So I guess this study showed positive effects on virtual reality. And I, I have some, some, some of that work is already published. I can share that with you uh, later on. Another study and tested the impact of virtual reality. Again, virtual reality using the headset, virtual reality meditation on college students' test performance. The idea was that, as we know, before tests, before exams, we are very anxious, very stressed. So I thought of implementing virtual reality meditation where students, before their exams, could put the headset on and see the virtual forest and be in the forest, not in that stressful classroom, but in the forest and enjoy the birds and the trees and all the nice music and visualizations that help them reduce uh, the anxiety. And we compared that, uh, that intervention in VR, we compared it to the video meditation. And guess what? It helped. Uh, in fact, the virtual reality meditation helped compared to the video uh, of the same visualization. By the way, uh, I just got uh, a couple of days ago invited to interview for New York Times uh, by a journalist that was really interested in this study. It got published last month and uh, stay tuned maybe uh, to, to read an article uh, based on the interview where I'll be talking more about the study. As far as the third study, this study uh, it was trying to see if using virtual reality uh, helped to cope people with social isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic that we all experienced. And that, that study was just a survey based, but we, we found that 75% of the respondents, we had over 300 something respondents, over 75% reported that really the VR, the, the ability of using VR during the pandemic really helped people to, to feel less lonely basically and less isolated. And we also found out that besides gaming, VR helped people to meet new people during the pandemic, uh, to exercise, to attend virtual events and escape the pandemic, escape the sadness and, and drama and escape the social isolation by visiting virtual places going here and there. So these are just samples of some, some little studies. I think we are running out of time, so I will skip maybe the next one, but I'll just tell you that we annotated, again, in virtual reality, we annotated um, 360 spaces with different vocabulary items and students were supposed to re uh, learn, retain those uh, words. And we had three conditions, again, VR headset, desktop, and 2D version, and the desktop version uh, was most effective, not the VR, not the headset VR, and not the 2D version. So that's just a more or less 
I could talk about my studies forever, so maybe another time, but uh, that was just a glimpse of uh, some of that. Um, maybe a couple of words about the future of VR, or we don't have time anymore. Actually, I think you can continue three, five minutes more. Okay, okay. I just wasn't sure because I know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's fine. We, we are excited, today. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, th this is maybe not extremely scientific, but with my colleague, um, we, with my colleague and I, we um, we analyzed the previous media, like media that are already established, radio, TV, cinema, video games. We looked at the evolution uh, of all these media. And if you, if you study the history of how each of them evolved, you will see that it took a long time it took a long time for each of these media to become normal, to become, become just regular media. And now, of course, each of them is like almost kind of old fashioned, right? TV, who watches TV, right? If, if we have everything else. Uh, the idea is that that evolution took a long time. So when we look at all the immersive media like VR, AR, MR, now we can, some people say, oh, it's just a trend. The next year it's going to be passe. This is just a trend. But actually, if you see, if you uh, look at the history of how also VR, for example, is evolving, we see those waves coming back. And the idea is that possibly that they, they will also, these immersive media will also get in, uh, adapted to our everyday life. We kind of see it already, right? So I wanted to share that. And this, will, this is already published also. It's a book chapter on that I can share with you. A couple of words about uh, the market analysis report that came out this year about how the industry goes. So right now uh, we have estimated about $22 billion in the, uh, as far as the market size value of VR. It, this number is supposed to triple by 2028 to about $70 million. In other words, it's all becoming very, there's a lot of investment in this industry and it's, it would not be completely surprising if eventually there will be a higher, bigger push into also VR-based learning in education, right? So I think our job is to see again, what, what works, what doesn't, in what, and what, uh, what context. The last thing I wanted to share uh, to, to, to kind of bring the context, the Russian context, this is based on uh, the, the large scale uh, survey that uh, Dr. Kukalenko and I and some other researchers uh, were involved in, we looked at we looked at uh, over twenty thousand teachers' response, responses and how they feel about the integration of VR in, into classroom. And as you can see from the figure, uh, we have this distribution of the different levels of integration. And we have the cluster of about 70% in the early, early stage. So they are kind of, ah, oh, okay, there is something like VR. I'm going to learn about it. I'm trying to understand what it is. So that's the majority of teachers. Then we have about 10% of people that kind of feel comfortable. It's like, okay, I'm comfortable with VR. But there is also about 17% that feel strong. Like I'm pretty sure Dr. Kukalenko, all the, all the strong adapters, uh, people that, oh yeah, I can rock it, I can teach you about it, I can show you how to implement that. So as we see, this distribution is not really very uh, even yet. Uh, in other words, uh, Russia is still at the early stage of the uh, integration level. Hopefully it will be changing again with the help of uh, awesome uh, people. So if somebody asked, are we ready to fully integrate VR in education? Probably the answer would be, we are not 100% ready yet, but let's hope for the best. So that's, that's all I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, comments, you can email me and invite any type of collaboration, talk, discussion. And that's it. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you, Regina. I have so many questions to you and I have so oh many God. comments <laughs> in our research. <laughs> but let me start from this. Um, I am particularly interested in uh, those studies, which show us that Actually, there are some areas in VR that are not, and areas in education that are not suitable for VR. And we know about them and we all, you know, read the papers. But anyway, my question is, at the moment, can you 
for example, in your field in language learning, which is more uh, something that you're interested in, can you list the spheres, the areas, the topics, the you know the the maybe even the uh, the so th those areas where VR is not necessary and maybe where VR is maybe harmful, I don't know. So, and the list of topics where, yes, we do need VR, we will use it, we're ready for it, or you're not yet, you're not ready yet. So what's your opinion on that? Yeah, that's a, that's a long topic, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That would, yeah, that's a long topic, it, it would take a while, but uh, it kind of in a nutshell, it, I kind of depends, right? Because every simulation, every experience, every VR experience is a little bit different, right? It differs uh, as far as devices go. Are we using cardboard? Are we using, uh, well, this is not VR MR, but are we using HoloLens? Is that, that's, uh, you know, the fanciest thing there is? Are we using haptic system? It all depends what our investment is, right? But if I were to like super simplify, I would say currently, when it's harmful, uh, well, besides, of, of course, those technical things like cybersecurity, sure. right? but, 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 but from the educational point of view, if we want to, if we want our students to learn something that is very, it's already cognitively charging, mm -hmm. then in addition, so imagine you go to that VR world, ooh, right, there's so much mm -hmm. going on. And in addition to that, you actually have to pay attention to somebody t teaching you about some aspects of chemistry. You go like, oh my God, that's too much. <laughs> that's too much. So it ne either needs to be more paced or scaffolded, right? Where we actually give hints and we, we don't throw the learners suddenly into a VR space like, okay, go and learn that. We need to be more kind of like uh, there is still kind of more teacher guidance, right? More instructor right. guidance, or hopefully with uh, some inbuilt VR simulations where you can have like a virtual agent guiding you or something like that. Yeah. Kind of like in a in a classroom too, right? Sometimes regular classroom has students that are maybe slower, right? Or not slower. I would say they need more time to absorb something, and, other, and others just get it. So it kind of depends as far as. So, Again, as far as harmful things, like not to overload, not to overload. So in, in the case of some of my research, when you do have vocabulary learning, it's already very intensive. So in addition to that, that's possibly too much. But a recent um, systematic review I did with uh, with uh, two colleagues that is under review right now, hopefully it will publish soon. Uh, we showed, that we, we found that if you have several exposures, of vocabulary, not only one time, but like several exposures, just like in regular learning, right? This gets absorbed better. So VR can be good in that mm. case. Okay, okay. And I'll you, you asked reading. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah, asked you mentioned about... vocabulary. You mentioned vocabulary that VR is not always helpful for learning vocabulary. That was my question about. So what are yeah, other yeah. areas where it's not effective? So again, it's not effective oh. so far when it's, when there's too much information given mm -hmm. at the same time Correct. but again again it's the same uh, it's the same in the real classroom so we can right. see right and as far as the good things i think it is uh, vr is really good for uh, like simulating some experiences like in this case we had uh, meditation right it's maybe not exactly education but it is helpful yeah. like if, if our students feel good they are going to learn better, right? That's, uh, mm -hmm. That always works. Mm -hmm. So uh, it helps with simulations, visualizations, uh, mm -hmm. virtual trips, as we know. So there are some aspects that are really exciting and I think, uh, uh, and I think super helpful. And let's see where the future goes with that. Thank you so much. And another question is about um, comparison of Russia and the United States. I know that you didn't research the, well, you didn't ask American teachers what they think about VR and how they are ready for, for, for it. But anyway, what's your feelings? What's your opinion? Is this the same or maybe, maybe American teachers are more advanced and maybe they are less advanced and maybe they fear more so what's your opinion on it are we at the same level the same page or we're different what do you think okay so that's a really good question and i wish i had done uh, some you know really large-scale study using american teachers 
but I didn't use a large, uh, I, don't, I don't have data on that, but I did, or actually I'm finishing a study with some other colleagues that we interviewed as far as uh, language teachers using VR. And if you look at some of the, and the questions that we had in the Russian uh, study were not the same as uh, what we had, but an over, overall impression is that still a lot of people are confused here too. So mm -hmm. there would be some people that are, you know, kind of a little bit, I would say, uh, more excited about the technology. They, they were able to explore it a little bit quicker, right? Like kind of my colleagues and I, but there are some people that still think that VR is the same as um, whatever, anything on the screen is VR for them, right? So we are talking about completely different technology. So, and um, so I think the awareness is, is growing, but it's still, it's still kind of early stage. At the same time, as we all heard about metaverse and what's going on with that. We're with living it. it. <laughs> Yeah, I was going, it's a we, but a lot of people are just like, really? What's that? Right. So uh, I think th there would be a lot of awareness being um, it growing very soon, very soon. So um, thank you so much, Regina. Thank you for your time, for sharing you. your research, your studies. And now, unfortunately, it's time to leave you and go for the next speakers who are. Thank you. Um, Маргарита Белоусова, Степан Лимак, Анна Кручинина, Виктор Чистополохов. I guess Виктор will uh, represent all the team, correct? Виктор, are you here? So your topic is practical classes for applied mathematicians using virtual reality technologies. If I'm and not mistaken, please... Маргарита will, will present. Uh, oh, Маргарита, I'm so features. sorry. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> because I see Victor and I thought that yes. he will start. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, Margarita, uh, please. I suppose Victor will help me <laughs> in some cases. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Margarita Belousova, and I'll tell you about teaching the students with using the virtual reality technologies. Uh, in the fourth year of study, students uh, of the Department of Mathematics and Mechanics attend uh, practical classes. At these classes, uh, they learn the applications for theories they study at seminars and lectures. One of these uh, classes is devoted to optimal control and maximum testing. Uh, so let's look at the simulation of the extravehicular activity. Uh, an astronaut should uh, control uh, the safer uh, jetpack. Uh, and to successfully dock the International Space Station. Uh, this simulation uh, was created uh, by Moscow State University for Russian space agencies purposes with the using uh, development environment Unity 3D. Uh, nowadays, uh, we use this simulator to educate students. They learn how to create the training systems, visualization, stereo visualization, etc. <clears throat> This simulation was developed at the Panoramic Virtual Reality System. Uh, this system is a powerful instrument for visual and motion simulation. It includes a stereo screen with three stereo projectors, a computer cluster, motion capture system, and mobile platform. Uh, the heads-up graphics projected on the semi-cylindrical project, uh, projection screen with a 3.5 meter radius in uh, uh, big re resolution includes the whole visual environment. Uh, you can see it uh, on slide or behind me. <laughs> uh, so realistic experience of simulations uh, achieved uh, using uh, deep feedback that activates big amount of users' biological sensors. In the first place, it's uh, vision and vestibular system. As everybody knows, the binocular vision uh, system lets us easily tell with a good accuracy how far away an object is. So a stereoscopic projection is really important for very simulated activities. And using three projectors, we achieve an almost uh, 180 degree forward facing horizontal field of view and the gauge test peripheral vision. To simulate volumetric space, it's necessary to create on the screen two different images for each eye. Uh, constructed in accordance uh, with the desired geometric arrangement of virtual objects. Uh, you can see at this uh, slide, um, this um, image um, has, uh, has two different images, uh, but, um, uh, but uh, our 
um, <clears throat> test the uh, see uh, the volumetric Im image. Uh, so uh, this feature determines uh, the advantages of stereo screens over the usual mono screens. A person sees virtual objects as they would look in reality. The semi-cylindrical structure of the PSVR screen in contrast to a conventional monitor allows you to uh, actively use peripheral vision. In addition, a person can shift um, their gaze in a wide range without noticing at the edge of the screen, which also has a positive effect on perception. Uh, let's describe how the stereo screen works. Uh, the viewer observes the image of some point O uh, of the reproduced object. Uh, spectral glasses, for example, a red blue, um, for example, this, um, are used for this. Uh, the viewer's uh, left eye sees image A uh, through the filter, and the right eye sees image B. Uh, point O itself will then appear to the viewer located in the space behind the screen uh, at the intersection of the sighting uh, axis, going uh, from the left eye to point A and from the right to point B. Uh, as you can see, stereopair is built for a very specific position of the human uh, head. If it moves uh, from the calculated point, uh, the image begins to appear distorted. To compensate for this, uh, this effect, a room navigation system is used, uh, uh, which allows you to drag the position of person head uh, in space uh, and dynamically change the geometry of the projection under uh, new coordinates. Uh, the system uses the RT track, a room navigation system, which includes uh, cameras operating in the infrared range corresponding infrared meters and set of reflective markers. In contrast to, uh, to the model example, it's uh, not the position of an individual markers uh, that is determined, but the position and orientation of a body. Set of several markers rigidly attached uh, to each other. You can see here, rigidly attached. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so the garden system of room is, uh, so instead of manually uh, measuring the distances between the cameras before starting the system, uh, a calibration problem is solved uh, by shoot, uh, shooting a known set of bodies, the coordinate system of the room is restored and the relative position of the cameras is calculated. Uh, in the future, one of these bodies is fixed uh, on stereo glasses. Um, information about the angular position of the glasses is presented in the form of matrix of guiding cosines uh, by the elements of which uh, you can calculate the angles of rotation and use them to build a correct stereo projection onto the screen. Uh, thus, uh, the use of tracking system together with a panoramic stereo screen uh, allows a person to perceive the simulated visual environment as an extension of real space, including when uh, moving around the room. Thus, we get a system that can be used for various type of simulators. Um, and uh, what about practical classes? At first, students first learn um, a short uh, listen a short lecture about the work of the vestibular apparatus, uh, eye movement, uh, and a general about the situation. Uh, in this part of classes, uh, they need to build the both automatic control of such systems and objective system for assessing uh, the quality of operation of such systems, as well as system for assessing uh, the quality of control. Uh, astronaut jet jetpack is discussed in detail. Further, uh, students write down the mathematical. Uh, formulation of this problem and perform part of the solution. It should be noted that the task is slightly simplified uh, compared to the real one. Uh, students complete um, the task on their own at home, uh, then their solutions are applied in practice in simulator that runs out of uh, the PSVR. PS Thus, uh, they not only get an idea of where they can use the knowledge uh, they have acquired, but also have the opportunity to work with other rather complex tech, and uh, they can use uh, the gained experience, for example, to create their own simulators. Uh, so um, this uh, course was also read at the Faculty of Space Research, uh, but in a more extended version. Uh, at the same time, students not only solve uh, some problem in order to insert the result of the solution in the simulator, but also develop a simplified version of the simulator itself, uh, which can uh, then be uh, run not only uh, on this system, but also on regular computer. 
So on slides, uh, you can see uh, how, how it's going. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Margarita, for your uh, very interesting talk. Um, do you have a panoramic system and uh, the great part of visual field, peripheral field, uh, is, you, uh, is used in this system. And what about the cyber sickness uh, of your student, about cyber sickness, simulator sickness, and discomfort symptoms when they are working at your system? Um, what about uh, simulation um, of uh, the, uh, this simulation uh, connecting to the ISS? Uh, they um, no, um, have, have no any, uh, any sickness. Um, uh, but uh, here we have another problem. Uh, we have uh, a, a deep space, uh, yes, but uh, have uh, our uh, body and uh, a big station uh, in a distance. Uh, so um, we uh, have no, uh, so uh, in uh, this simulation, uh, our uh, virtual um, controller uh, moves uh, with uh, a big speed, but uh, uh, in in um, but in reality, a person um, can uh, cannot uh, under understand. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, no. uh, person uh, can cannot identify the, this uh, because um, we have uh, just only big object and uh, our um, uh, binocular um, eye vision uh, cannot help us um, to determine a distance between uh, the ISS and us. Uh, so um, we have here another problem. Um, our person uh, can see uh, that uh, he reached uh, a big speed uh, uh, when, uh, he, uh, when he almost uh, crashed in, uh, in the ISS, in, uh, crashed, crashed with a station. Uh, so it's another problem. Um, so it's... Um, Mm. Yeah, um, we, um, we we try to uh, explain this um, this fact uh, on the first part um, uh, in lectures, uh, but students uh, can um, feel it only in our simulator, only uh, when they try to connect with the ISS and uh, they bump in in the station and uh, move uh, from uh, from dock. Uh, uh, but um, what about uh, different sickness? We have uh, different uh, simulators that can be uh, run uh, on this uh, system. Uh, for example, uh, here photo of the uh, moon uh, of the uh, simulator uh, for uh, con uh, controlling a uh, lunar rover. And here uh, we use um, the dynamic uh, a dynamic platform uh, to reduce uh, this sickness because uh, our person uh, sits um, on the lunar rover, uh, this rover moves, and uh, here we uh, can uh, get the sickness. Uh, so to reduce uh, this, we use the motion platform uh, to, uh, to imitate uh, the, uh, the motion. Uh, so uh, reduce, reduce the sickness. Oh, yeah, I see. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your very interesting talk uh, and your very interesting speaks. I think um, we can observe the different areas about um, around the, uh, the application of virtual reality in education and uh, education in school or in university. So I think it's, it's very interesting. And I hope that uh, we can overcome uh, the great problems uh, with virtual reality, with simulator sickness, uh, with cognitive overload and others to reach the main uh, effective uh, uh, outcome uh, in, our, in our work and research. Thank you very much, Julia. Maybe Every time I attend such uh, conferences I've, or meetups, I feel so optimistic because, you know, there are so many people who say, just as uh, Regina mentioned, your VR will die soon. This is just a fashionable technology. It's not going to work. But after meeting you, dear colleagues, dear friends, I feel like we do something important. And who knows that 
maybe this future is uh, uh, the, the meta <laughs> things are around us and maybe everything we do is not a waste of time and maybe we really improve education and the, sorry for those pathetic words, but maybe the um, virtual reality will help our kids to learn better, to teach us, educate them better. And the, the thing is that we are trying something new and we research it, we have some insights that will help all of us, the education community, to make life a little bit better. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Uh, we all have each other's contacts now. It's easy to find on LinkedIn and email. So please stay in touch and good luck to everyone. Thank you so much for coming again. Goodbye. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Так, коллеги, да, мы можем отключаться и отключать трансляцию. Большое спасибо, большое спасибо всем. Спасибо. Uh, these skills um, uh, can be tra can be transferred to, to real life. Of course, um, with these uh, simulators, uh, we can train uh, different people to operate with different uh, different uh, uh, systems uh, and, um, and uh, teach how to operate it. And uh, uh, our classes. Um, in, uh, from the start uh, includes uh, a virtual reality part. Um, so we uh, didn't compare the effect with traditional format uh, because uh, this is practical classes and uh, we have the pra uh, practical part uh, on our system. I hope I answered your question. Um, we can, uh, in case we can contact uh, uh, email, uh, I'll write it in chat if you want to <laughs> talk with me. <laughs> uh, so you can write it. 